In this lecture, we'll review and conclude the course. We'll review some of the technical ideas behind machine learning safety by way of three pillars. Here are the three pillars of machine learning safety research. One is machine learning research precedence, the idea that safety has technical problems and the machine learning community is most effective at solving technical AI problems. Another pillar is minimal capabilities externalities, that a research effort at scale needs to be precautious and avoid advancing capabilities in the name of safety. And then a third pillar is the socio-technical systems view, which is that preventing catastrophes requires more than technical work. It requires things such as improving incentives, safety cultures, protocols, and so on. Let's first talk about machine learning research precedents. Let's discuss some machine learning research precedents. One research precedent is that long-term goals are broken down into clear microcosmic subproblems. The problems are not left nebulous, and the problems are made tractable. They're not trying to consider a fullest version of a problem. It's also the case that ML researchers tend to work on subproblems that are addressable iteratively, collectively, and scalably. They're not trying to solve problems in one fell swoop. It's also the case that contributions are objectively measured. If a person improves performance on a benchmark, that means they did a good job. The worth of a contribution is not determined by high status people alone. It's also the case that in the machine learning community, the set of research priorities is a portfolio. They're not betting everything on the highest expected value research topic. They're diversifying their bet. It's also the case that the machine learning research community has anonymous peer review. They're not trying to convince their friends. They're trying to convince people who they don't know. The ML research community also is highly competitive, pragmatic, and fairly no-nonsense. It's also the case that for success in the machine learning research community, one's long-run track record is the main way to attain higher status. Despite sharing research precedents, machine learning safety is not the entirety of machine learning. There are many topics in machine learning that are not in ML safety. Here are some research areas that we considered in this course. One research area is robustness, which was about reducing vulnerabilities in models. A topic in robustness is long tail robustness. And the other topic we touched on is adversarial robustness, which can be related to AI security. Another research area is monitoring, which is about reducing exposure to hazards. A topic in monitoring is anomaly and malicious use detection, which can relate to uncertainty and security. Another topic is calibration and interpretable uncertainty, which relates to uncertainty. Model lie detection, although we discussed honesty in the alignment section, in particular, lie detection can be related to transparency and can be thought a part of monitoring. Trojan detection and trigger synthesis could be thought related to security and transparency. And likewise, detecting emerging capabilities and goals could also be thought related to transparency, and all of these fall under monitoring. Here we're using transparency in a somewhat broader sense where humans don't necessarily need to understand the model's inner workings, but they want to be able to say important things about it. Other research areas include alignment and systemic safety. In the case of alignment, the goal was to reduce the prevalence and severity of inherent model hazards. While we covered Trojans in the monitoring section, technically, if one were to remove Trojans from models, this could be considered part of alignment. Honesty is part of alignment, and that can be related to machine ethics, likewise for power aversion and moral decision-making and value clarification. Systemic safety is another research area, which has the topics of 
machine learning for improving decision making, and machine learning for cyber defense, and cooperative AI. Another pillar of machine learning safety research is minimal capabilities externalities, which you might recall that safety metrics and general capabilities are often measurably intertwined. And so decreasing risks by improving a safety metric by increasing other risks, such as improving general capabilities, is not a good strategy for improving safety. Consequently, to ensure that research does not result in vanilla general capabilities research, we advise that safety research improve the balance between safety and capabilities and create little to no general capabilities externalities. Recall that a current blind spot of much safety discussion omits nonlinear causality. If one asks, how does this directly reduce a risk, or how does this directly reduce an X risk, that's equivalent to requiring a chain of events with linear causality, where, well, if we do this, then that will lead to that, which will ultimately prevent the incident from happening. But today's interconnected systems, as you may recall from an earlier lecture, have nonlinear causality. They're multiple constants and effects. There are feedback loops. There's circular causation. There's emergence. There's butterfly effects. There's microscale, macroscale dynamics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these remote, indirect, diffuse, and nonlinear causes cannot be ignored, though these are ignored by many current safety analyses and discussions. So this was one of the other main purposes of this course. Let's say somebody asks the question, how does this directly reduce this risk? Or such as, how does expectations directly affect system safety efforts? Well, we can see that it doesn't directly affect system safety efforts. It's actually mediated through other factors. However, it certainly does affect system safety efforts indirectly and diffusely. So consequently, a simple story of how one thing directly leads to another can impose too much simplicity when dealing with real-world safety. And just as a reminder, diffuse socio-technical factors can be highly impactful, including and especially safety culture, which is said to be by some the most important factor to fix if we want to prevent future accidents. Let's look at the larger socio-technical system and see what some of these research areas address. Here's what adversarial robustness can address. It can affect the quality of a sensor. In the case of monitoring, anomaly and malicious use detection can affect other parts of the socio-technical pipeline. Meanwhile, honest models can affect other parts too. And improved decision making can affect higher parts of organizations and socio-technical systems. Now let's look at a cartoon of the machine learning development pipeline and relate these to concepts that were covered in the course. We'll start with tasks. Some tasks are difficult to specify precisely formally or through data sets, especially when we want superhuman performance. This is currently a bottleneck for some tasks such as transparency, cooperative AI, and value clarification because the tasks aren't yet really fully formed. Let's move further along the pipeline. One issue is that X and Y may be insufficient in quantity. X and Y may not cover aspects of the target distribution. X and Y could be difficult to measure. For example, feelings can be difficult to measure or X and Y may not represent future scenarios well. So this could touch on research topics such as black swan robustness and human value modeling. Optimizers and costs may not sufficiently suppress undesirable emergent properties, which can touch on our discussion of emergent properties and intrasystem goals. At the analysis part of the pipeline, researchers could stress test models analyze models, or try to discern if they have unintended functionality, and this can touch on areas such as robustness, which had many stress tests, and transparency, and trying to detect trojans. The next part of the pipeline is deployment. In the deployment context, a mismatch between the training data and future of the state of the world is fairly likely, and this touches on the topic of robustness. The models themselves 
can induce a distribution shift, which again touches on the topic of robustness. Since the deployment context is often open world, this can come with more degrees of freedom and the possibility of proxy manipulation. And this touches on the problem of proxy gaming. Then after deployment, we need to monitor, repair, and adapt the model. At this stage, obviously, as we just said, monitoring is relevant. So we'll need some tools such as anomaly detection, which can trigger things like conservative fallback policies and other tools for monitoring. For adapting, we could potentially adapt the model's cost function or utility function through value clarification. As we close the course, I'd suggest that for you to push the bounds of safety research, consider learning about and drawing inspiration from other research areas. Some potentially relevant research areas could be risk management, which has many strategies and concepts for reducing risk. Cybersecurity is about making software systems safer, and one could potentially draw inspiration from that. Safety engineering is about making complex systems safer, and since we're dealing with many complex systems, safety engineering could also provide some inspiration. Some other topics are survival analysis and regime shift modeling, which studies things like extinctions and shocks to ecosystems. Cybernetics is about regulating and adapting evolving systems. Normative ethics is about representing human values in the good which is obviously relevant for alignment. Economics is about incentivizing desirable outcomes of agents that themselves may be fairly self-interested. Law is about creating constraints against undesirable outcomes. That could also give some potential ideas in how to create models that don't perform undesirable behavior. Sociobiology is about understanding how evolutionary processes can distort many agencies' behaviors in more egoistical or power-seeking or selfish directions. Political science could be useful for understanding AI governance and deployment and give inspiration when thinking about issues in systemic safety. In closing, in this course, we discussed how contemporary risk management can be used to characterize risk and how to analyze existential risks. We discussed how ongoing research directions can help make machine learning systems safer, and we discussed some pillars of a pragmatic research paradigm toward creating safer ML systems. So what there's left to do is for you to go do technical research and keep up to date. Thank you.